We're going to go ahead and take this moment to burn some Palo Santo and bless this video with cleansing, with the cleansing that we need, creating sacred space, thanking the four elements, thanking Mother Ayahuasca, thanking Pachamama, thanking Spirit, the universe, for this moment, this now that we're living and sending each one of you who are watching this the cleansing energy of Palo Santo. As we open this sacred space, I want to ask Archangel Michael, Raphael, and Metatron to come forward and create a sacred space, a sacred container of safety, of clear understanding, of clear channeling, so that all that comes through, all that is spoken here, is for the highest good of not only myself, but those who watch this video. Namaste, beautiful souls. My name is Jakara, and I am a spiritual healing facilitator, and I work mainly with the Akashic Records to clear programs from past lives, from, uh, from this present life, from other lifetimes that could potentially be affecting you in real time on this lifetime. So today I want to talk about the experience of going through the integration process of, uh, of Mother Ayahuasca. Um, I posted last week a video um, sharing about my experience with taking the sacred uh, medicine, uh, plant medicine of Ayahuasca. And um, that was basically within the first week of uh, taking the medicine. I was still kind of feeling very strongly the medicine when, uh, when I recorded that video. And today uh, we are officially on the second week of, uh, from the first time that we took uh, Mother Aya. And um, yeah, so this is, this is something that, this is a video for those of you who want, who are interested in basically knowing how does it feel after taking the medicine and what happens after, right? So if you're interested in um, finding out what's happening after, what's going on, then you wanna make sure that you continue watching this video. So I wanna just put a disclaimer out there that this, this experience that I'm sharing is basically my own experience. You might have a different experience. However, by me sharing my experience, I hope to help activate you and help uh, alleviate any sort of uh, concerns that you may have um, before you take the medicine. You're probably watching this because you're either you're either going through the process of integration or you're uh, basically going through the process of uh, deciding if you want to take the medicine or not. So I'm hoping that between the video that I, that I posted last week, which I'm going to leave somewhere around here, um, and on the description below and this video hopefully this will uh, give you some sense of peace and um, um, and uh, you know not feel so overwhelmed or fearful about taking the medicine so um, the first week of taking the medicine I was still purging and I um, I just wanted to mention that when you purge with mother Aya you purge in different ways you purge physically emotionally mentally uh, and spiritually, all of these uh, purges are going to look different for everyone, but they're kind of they kind of fall into these categories. For me, in particular, I purged while taking the medicine uh, by you know vomiting <laughs> um, uh, water. Basically, I was basically what I was um, basically letting go. But in that process of purging, there is energetic release that happens as well, and so so that physical. Um, expression of purging it's also happening at the emotional and uh, spiritual um, and mental level so it's important to really stay open with that experience to not be afraid of the purge do not be afraid of this the way that you're processing this is just how the medicine works 
Um, and um, so the first week I wasn't I wasn't necessarily purging that way, but I, uh, you, the other way that you can purge is through uh, going to the bathroom. So number one or number two. So um, that was definitely my um, my ongoing thing uh, the first week, which was uh, last week. And um, another way that you could be purging is also through your dreams. So you may need to sleep a lot more. And I did notice that I was sleeping a little bit over eight hours than usual. Um, usually I sleep between seven, um, seven to eight hours, sometimes six hours. So, um, so that was definitely like my body. I was definitely in the medicine um, throughout my throughout my um, throughout my dreams last week. So I was definitely. Uh, in ceremony like I remember being in ceremony throughout my dreams and uh, processing things um, at a subconscious level through my dreams as well last week so that last week was very very powerful I felt like I was still in ceremony even though we were out of the ceremonial space I was still very much in ceremony so I would recommend um, for those of you who do energy work don't do what I did I started working right away um, and I would give myself that week off. Um, just in, in retrospect, the only reason why I say that is because you're still processing so much and the medicine is so strong still in, in, your, in your system. You want to kind of like create that little bit of that, uh, that boundary for yourself so that you can be in your energy and be in that processing without having to uh, go out there and work um, with other people's energies. That's the only thing that I would say uh, in regards to that. Now, if you don't have a choice, then that's fine. Just uh, make sure that you're um, practicing, uh, you know, that self-awareness and also creating a sacred space for yourself so that you can have um, the the time and the, the space for you to process your emotional um your emotional body, your mental body, for you to give yourself that space for that, okay? In however shape or form that looks like for you. For me, it looks, I go outside and I sit in my, on my front yard and I'm the crazy lady that sits in, <laughs> by my tree and, and meditates. Um, I'm sure my neighbors think I'm crazy, which is fine. Um, and um, I do that because that's a really a great way for me to connect, you know, connecting to nature, uh, meditation, uh, or even movement or just journaling, anything that will help you kind of get yourself back into that introspective mode so you can really feel your energy and allow yourself to process whatever needs to come out, right? So that's, that's um, my recommendation for the first week for sure because you do feel the medicine very strongly. Um, and by what I mean by feeling the medicine doesn't mean that you're going to have like all these crazy visions um, throughout the time that you're out of ceremony. That's not how it is. It's more of a presence. You feel like this presence presence and almost this need of being very present and very very grounding and 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 it's kind of go it kind of comes in and out and you you connect to her uh physically as well you gotta remember you're taking the brew you're connecting to her physically so she stays in your body and she expresses herself in your body by kind of like allowing her allowing you to feel her um, so it's almost like this sense of like really feeling her and being and being and feeling this need of being present more than anything. That's the best way that I can describe feeling the medicine. Um, and sometimes some people do fall asleep and that's how they feel the medicine as well is by falling asleep and then going through their process or whatever that looks like for them. Um, so that was the first week, right? The second week for me, it's been more of so the first week was very physical and the actual medicine was very physical for me when I was in, in ceremony. Now this week it's, it's feeling more mental and emotional. So it's more about the, the mental processes that I am going through to shed these old ways of thinking about myself. And I'm gonna give you an example of what that looks like for me. So for example, I am in this journey of, um, of learning how to relearn how to have a better relationship with food. I, um, I have been an emotional eater for my entire life. And right now I am learning or relearning how to connect to food on, in a different perspective and how to pay attention whenever I am using food to soothe or self-soothe myself or, um, or even not only to soothe, but also to celebrate, right? So using foods as a way to, um, to, to connect to my emotions, right? Um, so, um, and why, why is this important for me? Because I am getting ready to, um, to embark on this journey 
of having a child and, and I'm looking to lose weight so that way I can have a child and all of that good stuff. And for me, it's important to be an embodiment of health, you know, for, for, for my child. Um, so that's the inspiration behind it, right? Uh, but also the inspiration behind it is to be that embodiment for my inner child as well. So it's like, you know, reparenting myself, right, in that, in that process. So, so for me, the, this, 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 this week has been more about feeling into what it means to feel all of this resistance um, around, you know, weighing myself because I'm, I'm doing Noom and um, with this program, um, I have to weigh myself every day and I also have to put all my information and really just so for a practice of self-awareness, right? So you're not just mindlessly doing things. And um, so with that said, I um, in the past I have felt resistance and then I can't overcome the resistance and I'm afraid of myself or I'm afraid of like, oh my gosh, like I'm failing, I'm not being perfect. And all of these like crazy thoughts come uh, and flutter, flutter all around me and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna give up and I just, I can't deal. Uh, versus now I'm feeling more of a sense of like, oh, okay, these things are fluttering right now. Okay, all, okay, I already know you guys. Okay, cool, hi. And I'm just kind of like observing them. And then I'm like, okay, well, you're here. It's all cool. You're present. But then, um, but yeah, I'm still going to do this, whether I'm feeling this resistance or not, because I'm on a mission, right? So before I wouldn't have been able to do that because of the, um, because of, again, the, the, the overwhelming energy that I was feeling with that, um, that perfectionist and that, uh, sometimes that, um, self-sabotage, no, I don't want to say self-sabotage, but it's almost like lack of self-compassion really, where I'm, I'm really hard on myself. Right. Um, and, um, so, so with that said, uh, you know, I'm practicing more of that self-compassion, more of that, uh, introspection, more of that, you know, curiosity. It was like, where is this coming from? And like, oh my God, like I'm feeling this, you know, like I'm kind of like, you know, really being curious versus just kind of like, ah, I want to like kick myself in the, in, uh, in, in the butt. Right. So I did have a moment of, of a breakdown, uh, last week where I, um, you know, my, um, my fiance and I, you know, we do connect through food and, you know, we ended up, um, eating some like junk food that I, I really don't want to uh, do that. And I was just like, I felt such like a failure, like, oh my God, I can't believe this. And so it was like, I go, I, I tend to go immediately to that place of like, you know, not wanting to, um, to just come back into compassion and finding out, like I, sometimes I just go directly to that very harsh place very harsh parent right because that's what I grew up with like that's what I experienced and received my entire life that harshness um and so it got so normalized for me that I myself I'm harsh uh, I can be harsh with myself and even with my partner sometimes so with that said you know going back into that space of like okay it's not that bad it's okay you know like after I had that moment um which is part of my part of my purge. Like I had that moment, and that I realized that it was a purge that was happening for me because it's an emotional and mental purge. I went outside and I and I meditated under my tree in front of all my neighbors, which is fine, whatever. Um, and I live like right in the corner, which like it's so funny because like you can see me everywhere. Like no matter where you're coming from, like I'm there in the middle, meditating under my tree. Um, so. Um, so basically, I was meditating there, and I got this message because, again, when you're connecting to to Mother Earth, you're connecting also to Mama Aya because she's connected to everything, right? Um, so I got this message like, it's not that bad. It's going to be okay. You know, just be very patient with yourself. This is not a one-time thing. You're going to be, it's going to be a process. It's okay. Just open up to the process. Just stay curious. Uh, you know, you're still loved. I still love you. I felt like Mother Aya was really like mothering me at that moment when I received that message. And I was like, I felt, it felt so soft and so gentle that I was just so grateful to receive that and um and that shifted a lot within me i was like oh okay i can talk to myself this way i don't have to you know uh speak to myself or to my partner or in any shape or form that um that has to be harsh like there are other ways to do this so so that was really beautiful to really feel that shift that happened spontaneously within myself just by connecting to nature and going back and meditating and doing something to try to get myself back into center and then also receiving the medicine as or and the messages of the medicine as I was meditating which is very different from what it was for me for the past for the on the in the past I would just meditate and I would just be in my energy this time around I felt how connecting to mother nature I was connecting also to the loving energy of mother Aya 
So that was really beautiful. And, um, and I have to say, like, I, and this happened, like, at the end of last week. I think it was, like, Sunday. Like, it was, actually, it was the beginning of this week. And then um, come into this week, I'm kind of like, okay, I am going through this process of integrating and I'm learning who I am and learning how I want to show up in the world and how I want things to, um, how I want my life to be. Like, who am I and how do I want to show up, right? Not how I believe others need, you know, will accept me, but how do I want to show up in the world and the way that I show up in the world is the way I'm going to uh, continue to, to embody because that's the comfort, like that's what is, that's what I'm supposed to be not to constantly be something else that I'm not. So um, so basically, you know, going back to like, oh, I have to look a certain way. I have to lose a certain amount of weight to be accepted by my parent, like by my family, like my, like, my, like my mother and my mother-in-law. You know, like I have to do this in order for me to do that. I have to do that in order for me to, no, I'm doing this because I want to be happy and I'm happier when I'm doing this. And, and for me, um, it was also a thing for me um, where when I went into these, um, into these apps where I was trying to lose weight or I was, um, um, or when I, and, and I'm going to share something very, very, uh, vulnerable here. Um, I used to be very, a lot smaller than, this is the biggest I've ever been. And, um, and I used to take, um, those pills that, that take away your, um, your appetite, the appetite suppressants, and they kind of make you feel like your own speed or something. And, um, and I remember working out until I was really tired and getting really skinny and people celebrating this part of me. Like, oh my God, you look so great. But they didn't even realize all of the crap that I was dealing with behind the scenes. But because I was getting that positive reinforcement from people, I thought, oh, okay, so this is the way. So I kind of let go of that and I was very scared of, of really st starting this journey because I didn't want to go back to that, to that person that was a very um unhealthy with her with her patterns right um you know where i was like really uh just it was self-deprecating and, and also uh uh self-flagellating um um myself and um i don't know if that's even a word but um what i was saying i'm thinking in spanish um but the self it would be self-deprecating or also like um self-loathing I would say self-loathing um that would be the best word and you know being in that space and I'm sharing this because I want I want you to understand the reason why I'm taking mama Aya too is like you know or I'm taking these plant medicines or I'm oh I've been in this journey of healing is because I realized after going through a series of really crazy experiences and and abusive environments and um in an abusive um marriage and all of these things right um, I realized that I, you know, I had to take the time to really go within and see like, what the heck is going on here? Like, I'm a hot mess. Like, what is going on here? And then, yes, I started, I, one of my biggest fears was to gain weight. That was one of my biggest fears. Like, what's going to happen when I gain weight? Like, oh my gosh, the world is going to end. The world hasn't ended and I'm the heaviest I've ever been. And, um, but then yet I am in the space of being, of learning how to love myself no matter where I'm at at the moment. And this is such an important thing, especially for those of us who are out there, um, you know, um, struggling with this stuff. And there's so much noise out there and so many people out there just saying, oh, well, you know, you're not healthy enough. You're not doing enough of this and this and that. There's so much noise that people can, because they themselves are suffering and they themselves are dealing with self deprecating thoughts or um or you know self-loathing that they project this onto you because they see something in you that they hate about themselves and um so then they instead of them uh, accepting that there's something that they hate about themselves they're going to take all of that self-hate and throw it out at you and um and that was one of the reasons why i also felt very insecure about doing youtube videos or going on to instagram on you know i've over like I've had this fear for my entire time that I've been doing these things. But at the same time, it's like, you know, feel the fear and still do it. And that's what I'm doing. Because if I am able to share something that can activate you, that can help you feel less alone in the world, that can help you feel like you have an opportunity to, to heal, that you have an opportunity to, to overcome something, that I, then I've done my job. Like, that's literally my purpose here is to be of service. To be of service and to be that beautiful connection 
um, or not that beautiful connect, not that beautiful connection, but you're already connected, but that beautiful reminder of your connection to spirit of your connection to yourself, to your authenticity, to, um, to who you really are. So, and I digress, like I'm kind of, I kind of went on a tangent, but you know, I really wanted to share this with you because, um, there, you know, there is so much that I'm still working within myself and, um, and I just wanted to be straight honest with you, you know? There's so, like I said last week when I was, you know, anyone that tells you that they've had everything figured out and they're, you know, they may look perfect, they may look the part, but they're, they're not doing the work, then, then you want to you wanna see that as a red flag, you know. You want the healers who are healing themselves as well. You want those people who are going deep, trying to help themselves and at the same time helping others because those, that's, that's what really matters. You know, being all here, all high and mighty, and um, pretending that you have everything figured out. Yes, you figured out a lot of stuff, but you also want to make sure that you're honest about, you know, the fact that you are not perfect, that you're not a guru, that all you're doing is, all you're doing there is just, um, you know, disempowering the other person. And I'm not here to disempower you. I'm here to empower you, my love. So, yes. So you are in the right place here. And um, so basically what I was going to say here is, you know, the, the second week has been all about really going deeper into this journey of really self-love, of self-compassion, of, of self-curiosity, of, of understanding. And, and I'm going to continue working on this. Like, this is not just the end of it, right? I'm, gonna, I'm sure this is going to continue happening. What I've heard from a lot of people that have taken ayahuasca more than one time or have taken it a long time ago is that some sometimes one ceremony can take many weeks or even years for you to integrate and for you to process and then go back. And once you feel ready, then you can go back and take the medicine again to go a little deeper. Some people need a little bit more extra ayahuasca to kind of go deeper because they, they kind of went into the, sur they were in the surface level the first time. So it depends on really uh, on what you feel. So it's all about really following your intuition, following how you feel about it, following uh, basically what you, um, what you know is best for you because you will know what's best for you. Nobody can tell you what's best for you. Um, so yeah, so the first week was very physical um purging the second the the first week right and the second week was it's been a mental and emotional um i want to say it's been a purge but it's been more of like an understanding and integrating of all this stuff so i feel like this is it's part of that that process of of really connecting to self and releasing and i do feel a lot better um like i feel like so much so much peacefulness still from 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 the medicine and I, I have heard that some people could potentially feel um, um, sad on, on the first or second week. And part of, it, part of it has to do with the fact that some things are at the subconscious level that Mother Aya is showing you. She wants to show you that there's sadness inside of you. She wants to show you that something inside of you that needs to come out. So for me, it was like that anger, right? Like that reactive, like that situation where there was like that reactive anger for me um, um, around, you know, not being perfect and not doing things perfectly fine and you know and not like not doing things like perfect 100% like how dare I like you know but look at what I've done like for me it was that like she showed me like to my face like look at what's happening here like you know in your face so then I was able to go back and say but you know let me let me just scale back a little bit and just recognize that I am in this process of growth and I don't have to be perfect I don't have to be perfect right um, I am already perfect. Exa I'm made exactly how I'm made. Like this moment of time and space is perfect. And the expression of me in this moment of time is perfect. The expression of you in this moment of time is perfect. So just remembering that, right? Yes, of course, we give ourselves permission to, to improve ourselves and to do things um, uh, for the better. Absolutely, yes. But not, for, not at a cost of feeling like we're losing at a game like not at that cost but more more so of like oh I'm joyfully aligning myself with my soul two different energies right so um, so that second week I hope that you found this video helpful uh, I know I went on a tangent there but um, I felt it was important for me to share that um, so you could understand um, why I've been taking mama Aya and and really the truth of of, of um, of my journey like the, my journey has been so layered you know and um and um and i'm grateful i'm grateful for my journey there's nothing 
that I regret. Absolutely nothing I regret from this journey at all. Everything that has happened has happened because I was meant to embody all of these things and be able to, to learn them so I could hold space for others. Now, one last thing that I wanted to mention um, is that if you're experiencing any sort of uh, any sort of negative energy or very heavy energy, um, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be happy to assist you with Akashic clearings. I have done these for myself and for other people who have taken the medicine. I do take I do uh, do clearings before your your ayahuasca or any other sessions um, to help you drop deeper into the medicine. I do do clearings around that. If there's any programs that will prevent you from dropping into the medicine, I also do clearings afterwards to help you drop also into the medicine uh, and to receive the integration um, and be able to just really align yourself with the medicine because that could potentially be something that could um, affect you. So uh, you can go to my website, which I'm going to leave on the description below, and book a, a, an appointment. Uh, you can start if you if you're confused with you know what to do. Like if you want to, you're not sure if a one or two session, one hour or two hour session would be um, uh, good for you. You could um, just book a discovery call first with me, and then we can I can tap into your um, into your akashic records, into your higher self, and get the information from your higher self, and then um, and then get that going. So yeah, so that's basically all I have to share with you. I just wanna share my gratitude for you. If you like this video, you find it helpful, you find it inspiring, please let me know in the comments um, if you do or like this video or share with someone. Help me grow this community um, because I really, I'm, I'm just honestly, this is, this is what I want to do. I wanna grow this community. I wanna work, I wanna work in, this, um, in this experience of helping you connect to your highest potential as we do this together we are holding hands together we're walking each other home and uh and i'm here to be of full service to you i'm so grateful to be in the space of uh of being able to help others at a such deep and meaningful level um i i am i take this as a sacred path um and as a sacred honorable uh, work that uh, that I am just floored and so humbled every single day to be able to uh, hold space for for you. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like this video, um, if you want any any more things like this, make sure that you comment um, on the comment section of this video. Let me know how are you processing your ayahuasca experience if you've already done that, or maybe you're getting ready to do an ayahuasca experience. Maybe you want to share. Um, any questions or you want to share maybe how you're feeling about um, prior to your experience and yeah so hmm. let's take a couple of deep breaths together as we feel into what was shared today I want to invite you to take a moment to be present with yourself with your body I want to thank you for being here, for saying yes to yourself, for saying yes to healing. Thank you and namaste.